time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. A family can only work together if each member is willing to make sacrifices for each other. Today in the R Lounge, we meet one bad apple that fell far from the tree. This brother has been dead to our OP for quite some time. Brother mocked and cut me off because I was a janitor, so I made him lose his job. I'm 31 female running a small bakery business of supplying cakes and pastries. My journey of becoming a business owner is no less than a miracle. I have never thought that I would be able to successfully run a business. Neither I was skilled enough to do so, but all I had was the courage and determination to put in my hard work. You see, I've always been a hardworking woman ever since I was in my teens. I come from a lower income group class. My mom was a single woman raising two kids, me and my younger brother. My dad has remarried another woman and settled in a different city without providing mom with any child support. Mom worked two jobs to put food on her plates, but mom never compromised on our education. She was aware that education was the only thing that could pull us out of poverty. But why am I writing this after so many years? Today I'm feeling like I have seen a ghost and it is my younger brother, Alan. He is two years younger than me. Today, I was in my shop serving my customers as usual when I saw my younger brother. I had seen him almost after 12 years. He had cut me off from his life because I was a janitor back then and he was doing a respectful job. Yes, he was in sales and was ashamed of me because I was a cleaner. After 12 years, he is still working in sales. The company for which he works onboards small businesses and connects them to customers. It is like Amazon for small businesses and confectioners. He was there at my shop to onboard me as a client for his company. He was equally shocked to see me as if he saw a ghost. Initially, he thought I was working there. He asked my employee to call for the shop owner and my employee pointed towards me. Yes, it sounded like the climax of a family drama movie. I know. He kept staring at me. I think he was embarrassed to start a conversation with me. Or perhaps it was still unbelievable to him and his ego didn't allow him to talk to me. I also stared back at him with a straight face. After a few seconds, he left. I didn't stop him either. Though there was no conversation between us, his sudden appearance brought back all the memories of the past. I dedicated my youth to fund his education. I sacrificed my future and my career just to make his. In the end, he was feeling ashamed to call me his sister and cut me off from his life. I'm not trying to gain any sympathy from this post, but this is my truth. I don't expect anything from this post. I just wanted to speak my heart. Wow. I'm sorry, OP. He should be kissing the ground you walk on. You didn't have to help him, but you did out of the goodness of your heart. How you make your money is your business, and it shouldn't matter as long as you're getting food on the table. He should feel grateful to have a sister like you. Without you, he'd be nothing. Update 1. Thank you so much for all the love and those cute virtual hugs. It made my day, honestly. I wasn't expecting my post to blow up because I didn't even share my full story, but thank you so much for all the support and upvotes. The update is going to be about my past. A lot of you wanted to know the details about my journey, so here it is. Feel free to skip if you're not interested in knowing about my background. No problem. So, I was still in high school and Alan, my brother, was in ninth grade when my mom fell seriously sick. She suffered from prolonged fever and was later diagnosed with a lung disease. This meant that she was no longer able to work and feed us. She used to work as a nanny at a daycare, and then later part of the day, she worked as a cleaner for a bakery. I had no option but to quit my school because food was still more important than education. My mother requested the bakery owner to let me work at her place. She was a kind woman and allowed me to work at the bakery. That was the turning point of my life, but it was years later. So I became the breadwinner of my house at 17, but the income was not enough for three of us. Mom requested Alan to take up a part-time job to help us with the expenses, but he denied it. He wanted to focus on his studies. I supported him and took up another job as a lawnmower. My brother was in college the first year when mom passed away. It was a very devastating time for us, rather for me, because my brother found solace in his college friends and his girlfriend. It was I who was left alone because I had no friends but my mom. Alan had moved out to his college dorm, but I was still paying for him. He rarely used to visit the house, and even when he came, he just came for money. He wasn't like that before college, but after entering college, he was becoming more and more arrogant. Our conversation was almost nil. If this was not enough, he started mocking me for being a school dropout and for being a cleaner. Whenever I asked him about his college, he used to say, why do you care to ask? You won't understand a thing about it. Initially, I tried to school him as an elder sister and his provider, but soon realized that he had come far away from being schooled. So I gave up and told him to take care of his own expenses and I wouldn't provide for him anymore. 
Yes, I cannot be the doormat that he was expecting me to be. He got infuriated by this because now it was the end of his free money and now he had to move his butt to earn money. A lot of abuse and trolls came from him, but I was adamant about cutting him off financially. You see, our relationship was already growing thin and he was not respecting me at all. So why should I spend my hard earned money on that brat? He said he would cut me off. I said, sure, gladly. He threatened me not to contact him ever. He was like, I'll be getting a decent job in the next one year. Don't come to me begging for money then. I was poor, but with self-respect. I swore to him that day that I would never ask for a penny from him. I would beg on the street, but it would never turn to him. I don't know if it was my self-respect, my arrogance, or just my anger. Yes, he called me all those names like sweeper, cleaner, and bootlicker, but who cares? This was the same cleaner's job which was putting food on our table for so many years. After that day, he visited me twice, and both times, it was because he needed some urgent money. I didn't give in easily. It was after a lot of pleadings and begging that I used to lend him the money he needed. I told him that it was a loan and not free money, and he had to pay me back. But one day he crossed all limits. He mocked me in front of his girlfriend. When he borrowed money, he promised that he would return it within a month, but it was more than six months and he had not returned back. One day while I was coming back from work, I saw him roaming in the subway with his girlfriend. I was in need of money or else I would have never have done that. I approached him and asked Alan to come aside because I didn't want to embarrass him in front of his girlfriend. But he behaved as if he didn't know me. He was like, go away, I don't want to talk to you. If he was a brat, his girlfriend was a monster. She said, ew, is this janitor your sister? She stinks of detergent. I impulsively responded that she stinks like a pig. Yes, it was funny and I'm a big mouth person and I don't regret it. Yes, Alan broke seven hells on me, abused me and said he was no longer my brother and that I should never contact him. I could have punched him on his face and dragged him to the police, but you know, I wasn't expecting such a kind of abuse. It was like them versus me alone. I left the place with teary eyes and all judgment eyes because you see, I was a cleaner and he and his girlfriend were in good clothes. So people are always quick to judge who might be the wrong in that case. Anyway, I don't care if it was good for me, but I cried a lot that day after the humiliation and missed my mother. It was due to my mother's blessings that I was offered a baker's job at that bakery. It happened so that the baker met with a sudden accident and was put on bed rest for four months. The baker was a good friend of my mom and I being the curious girl used to ask her for the cake recipe and sometimes used to help her at peak hours. Not only that, my mom also used to try out baking those cakes at home after taking the leftover material from the bakery. So I have known baking since I was 10. The owner knew this, so when the baker was hospitalized, the owner asked me to prepare some of the famous cakes of the bakery to test my skills, and I was good. Not as good as that woman, but yeah, I was good. I was put on a trial for a week to see the customer review, and there was no negative feedback from the customer if not positive. The customer didn't notice any change in quality and taste, so I got the job of the baker. The pay was two times that of a cleaner, so I left my lawnmower job, but I got a lot of extra time. So I started baking the cakes and pastries at my house and supplying them to the neighbors. It was not easy or quick. It took five years to kick off. I don't think it would have been successful without my husband. The old man whom I replaced at the bakery had a son who was delivering orders for the bakery. We fell in love and when he got to know that I was running a side gig of supplying cakes in the neighborhood, he was like, let's do it full time. We saved a lot, got married, and then started our own venture. I was baking at home and he was delivering. It was only last year that we were able to rent out a small bakery corner of our own. It might sound like a fairy tale, but trust me, it wasn't. There were times when we had to sleep empty stomachs because we didn't get any orders in a week. It took its own sweet time to click, but I'm really grateful for everything we have now. I was a cleaner with no parents, but a narcissistic brother who despised me and abandoned me. Now I have something of my own, I have a husband and a three-year-old daughter. What else could I have asked for? You know, I wasn't even good with writing on the internet stuff until very recently. When we opened our shop, other local shop owners suggested that we create our online page and all. Yes, we paid someone to do that, but I had to learn the skill of regular posting because we can't afford to hire someone to do that regularly for us. I click pictures of the cake and write descriptions about flavors and ingredients on various social pages. Sometimes my husband used to help me and sometimes I used to seek help from my kind customers but now I have learned the skill. Our page gets visitors and so does our bakery. I'll drop the location below. If you guys pass through this way, please visit. Happy to serve. Wow, you should be extremely proud of yourself, OP. You built a life that you're living from the ground up. Where on earth did your brother's entitlement come from? 
You'd think seeing your mother and sister struggle would humble someone. Update 2 A lot of people commented that I wrote my last update for the marketing of my bakery. I don't mind those comments, but I got a lot of love and support from the update. So thank you all, all of you. Also, a lot of you asked me if my brother showed up again. It was not until a week back, but yes, I saw him again last week, and that's why I'm updating this thread. Alan was given the task of onboarding my store on his platform, so even if he hated my guts, he had to meet me again. But this time, he did the research and found out that my husband was co-owning the place. He entered my bakery and asked for my husband for my employee. My employee was busy serving customers, so he redirected Alan to me. I was standing at the cash counter, but Alan didn't come to me. Instead, he waited for my employee to get free and help him out. My employee told Alan that my husband was not available in the store, and if there was anything he needed, he needs to talk to me. Alan went out. I'm guilty to admit that yes, I was noticing him closely enough, though I was surrounded by customers at the cash counter. He was talking to someone over the call. He then angrily came inside, stood in front of the counter, and yelled, Hey you there, my company wants to onboard your store. Your customer would increase at three times and your profit by multiple times. Fill up your details on this sheet. His tone was so arrogant that I felt like knocking his head out of his skull. My customers and my employee were shocked at his behavior and they looked at me for the reaction. I just responded calmly, sorry, I don't need your company to help me in my business. And yes, next time ask your company to send someone who is polite and not a brat like you. Thank you, you may leave. I got a lot of smirks and air vibes from my customers for putting him in his place. As expected, he stormed out, murmuring something under his breath. When my husband came in the afternoon to drop off some grocery items to the shop, the employee told him about my encounter with the stranger. My husband was shocked that how could a sales guy be so arrogant? I took him aside and told him that he was no sales guy. I mean, yes, he was a sales guy, but also my brother. My husband lost his crap and wanted to hunt him down and kick his butt. He told me that next time he comes, don't talk to him and give him my number, and I'll shove his arrogance in his butt. It amazed me how much you can hate a person. Alan hated me so much that he barely could speak to me properly. His arrogance was not allowing him to at least have a courtesy. Anyways, good for him. My husband is still very angry with him and says that he would complain about him at the company office and that he misbehaved with me at my store. I'm asking him not to get into all of this. We have so many other craps to take care of other than dealing with that brat. If he's representing the company he works for and behaving this way, who the heck would want to be a part of what he's selling? He sounds like the worst salesman. Update 3 Oh, I tell you, my husband got no chills. My husband found out about the details of Alan's company and got to know that some of the bakery shops have associated themselves with that company and some are in the process of doing so. Some of the bakery owners were my husband's friends who ran their shops in different places in our area. My husband told them that Alan has misbehaved with me and that he was an arrogant man. He was able to convince a couple of his friends to sever the ties with Alan's company or ask them to change the area salesperson. My husband called the company's helpline number and told them that we were interested in onboarding our store on their website, but we needed a different sales guy. A few days later, some senior executive visited our store and said that they got a complaint that their area sales guy had misbehaved with me. That's when I got to know that my husband was up to all this. I wanted to deny it, but my husband was really trying hard to pull off my revenge, and the least I could do is support him. Alan deserves no mercy. I said yes and showed him the CCTV footage. Voice wasn't there, but Alan was seen pointing fingers at me and throwing a sheet at me to fill up the details. The executive took the details and left. Almost a week later, I got a call from Alan. He was shouting at the top of his lungs. He called me a witch for eating his job. I was lost for words at a sudden accusation. My husband saw me and snatched the phone from me. My husband gave him back what Alan deserved. I was just crying, not because of my husband abusing Alan, but just thinking, what did I do to deserve so much hate from my brother? Alan's wife called me later that day. She wasn't the same girl whom Alan used to date in college. She was someone he met on a dating app. She told me that she was pregnant and Alan had lost his job because my husband had complained about him. She was soft and polite and I asked her if she knew what Alan had done to me. She said no, Alan had told her that his narcissistic sister is a gold digger and has got wealth by marrying a bakery owner and now she is bossing him around. She was requesting me to withdraw the complaints my husband had registered with his company and help Alan get back the job. I narrated the truth and told her it was Alan who was an arrogant brat and looked down upon me and there was no way I would let down my husband. She didn't know the truth about her past. Alan had told her 
that I was leeching on his money in his early career days, and when he stopped providing for me, I abandoned him. She admitted that Alan was indeed arrogant, but she had to marry him because she got pregnant and had no substantial means to raise the child. She also told me that Alan had been fired from his two previous jobs for his arrogance. No wonder. She still requested me to save Alan's job, but I made it clear that I was not going to go against my husband and that Alan would lose the job even if I withdrew our complaint because he's a brat. When she insisted further, I said, okay, I'll do that if Alan comes to me and apologizes for his behavior. She knew Alan would never swallow his pride and apologize. She said, okay, and hung up. It's been a week. I didn't get any call or apology from Alan. My husband was telling me that I was hopelessly waiting for Alan and that he was not going to say sorry. No, I'm not being a doormat. I never have been one. But the thing is, Alan is my only family left. Dad had abandoned us when we were a kid. I don't even have a memory of him. I don't know if he is even alive or dead. My mom is dead. Alan is the only one left in my family. I sometimes do lament if we could get along as we did as kids, but I think that's never going to happen. He is never going to let go of his arrogance, and I can't let him exploit me. If I consider him to be the only one in the family, he should also think it in that way. Also, when I have done so much for him, I dropped off from school. I worked two jobs, and I put my future at stake to secure his. Even after that, I helped him financially whenever he asked for help. The least he could do was say sorry, but he didn't. Yes, I'm moving on with my life. I had forgotten him until when he showed up at my store. Now I'm praying that I never have to cross paths with him because it brings back harrowing memories of the past and also a hope of reconciliation, which he shatters brutally. Thank you so much for all the love and support. It's not surprising that he's lost his jobs. This guy has never learned his lesson, and now he has a wife and a soon-to-be child. He really needs to get a grip, and he doesn't seem to like family. He doesn't deserve to even be called family. He'll never apologize, but it's unfortunate because he needs to learn that it's not just about him anymore. He has a family to think about. C'est la vie. What do you think of Alan's behavior? What would you do if that was your brother? Would you have sacrificed it all to help your siblings? Tell us your stories in the comments below. Thank you for following along today. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to share regarding today's content, we want to hear it. See you next time.